In this video, we'll be going over the basics of fixed point binary math. I'm going to show how it works, why to use it, then I'm going to pull up MATLAB and show how to use the FI class in MATLAB, and then finally show some fixed point examples in Simulink. So the easiest way to understand fixed point is to start with a simple binary example of for a given 3-bit value. So I'm going to write out all the possible binary values for 3 bits. So we have binary 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So there are 8 possible values. Now let's talk about the decimal value, which is in MATLAB and Simulink referred to as the stored integer. Here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the way we got the stored integer value was to sum the ones in the binary value. So each binary place, just like when dealing with powers of the 10 in normal decimal number, has a weight to it. So this slot will be 2 to the 0, this will be 2 to the 1st, this will be 2 to the 2nd, or in decimal we have 1, 2, and 4. So if I have a 1 in this position, I'll have 4, 2, and 1. So 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. Similarly up here, if we say 2 plus 1, we get 3. So now another way that binary numbers can re be represented is as signed. In this case, the MSB will be used to determine, the MSB being the most significant bit, the sign. And if the MSB is a 1, that's a negative value. So let's just write out the signed value. And this is 2's complement signed, which is what MATLAB and Simulink use, and that's very standard. 0, 1, 2, 3. And the way I remember this is just that this will be the most negative value. Minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. All 1's will be 1 LSB less than 0. So the way I remember this is that if you have your unsigned value, let's say, and then your signed value, this will look like a lightning bolt, where 0 corresponds to 0, and max corresponds to negative 1. So to represent fixed point, we're basically just going to scale these stored integer values by some number to represent either larger or smaller numbers with a given number of bits. So even though I might only have three bits, I could actually represent a very small value or a very large value by just putting the decimal where I want it. Just like when you do in base 10, you say 1 e to the 10, you've represented a much larger number with only one decimal bit. So if I have my 3-bit example, I could put a decimal here. This is the same as multiplying by 2 to negative 1. If I put my decimal here, this is 2 to negative 2. Or if I put my decimal here, it's 2 to the 1. So let's do an example with a fractional length of 1, which is the same as multiplying by 2 to the negative 1. We're going to consider both the signed and the unsigned. So first, let's consider the unsigned. The way that MATLAB and Simulink are going to notate this is U fix 3 E N 1, where you have this being S or U for signed or unsigned, fix for the fixed point, 3 is the word length, the number of bits, and 1 is the fractional length, the exponent which we have chosen as minus 1. So for this unsigned example, our decode would go 0, 0 0.5. We've taken 1 from the sign value and multiplied by 2 to the negative 1. 1, which is 2 over 2, 3 over 2, 5, 4 over 2, 5 over 2, 6 over 2, and 7 over 2. 
So there's two really important things to know about this. One is the step. So our step here was 0 0.5. Every time a bit changed, we grew by 0 0.5, our real world value. The other thing is our maximum number, which was 3.5. Here our maximum number was 7, which is 2 to the third minus 1. So that's the word length minus 1. Here our step was 1, which is just 2 to the 0. Here our step became 0 0.5. 2 to the minus 1, our fractional length. We could also say our step is 1 over 2 to the fractional length. Our maximum value, 3.5, is again 2 to the third minus 1, but then we divide it by our fractional length of 2 to the fractional length. So we can choose our representation of our fractional length based on what step size we need, our precision, and what range we need. So let's consider the sine case. So MATLAB is going to notate this as S fix 3 EN1. And we're going to take our values here and divide by 2 to the first again. So we have 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and now negative 4 over 2, which is minus 2, and it's 1.5 minus 1 minus 0 0.5. So our range here our, for this value is actually going to be 2 to the third minus 1, because we've lost a bit from the sign, and we have to subtract 1 our maximum negative value is going to be 2 to the third minus 1 negative. No minus 1 there. So for sine, it's 2 to the word length minus 1 or minus 2 to the word length minus 1. And then I have to throw in a negative 1 for the positive value. Here we're going to just divide by the fractional length. So our maximum positive value is going to be 2 to the third minus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 to the first. And this value here is going to be 2 to the third minus 1 divided by 2 to the 1, which equals minus 2. So for signed values, just like the unsigned, we can know our range and our step size. Our step size for the signed was the same as the unsigned of 0 0.5, which is equal to 1 over the fractional length. For the maximum negative value, we have the same rule, we just don't subtract 1. So I could keep going with the fractional length. If I just keep increasing this, it's going to keep dividing and making this number smaller and smaller. If I go the other direction, I can make it larger and larger and change essentially my step size and scale these numbers by some power of 2. So what does fractional length actually mean when it comes to binary math? So first, let's consider adding two 3-bit values without fractional lengths. So if we add these together, we're going to end up with 1, 1, carry to 1, 1, 1, 1, which is equal to 7, stored integer. Now let's say we had a value with a fractional length of 1, and our second value is going to be a fractional length of negative 1. So we're going to do 0, 0, dot 0. And let's actually do some values. So we'll have this one be 1, 1, 0, and this one be 1, 1, dot 0. We're going to fill in the zeros here. 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So all we did was just align the decimals when we did the add with the fractional lengths. So this is where the magic of Simulink and MATLAB and fixed point really comes in. 
that it's going to keep track of these representations of your values and where your decimal points are for you and handle the alignment when you actually come to ads. So in, a, in Verilog code, if I was actually going to do this, I would really need to remember in my code to do a bit shift of one here and a bit shift of one the other direction for the other number before I came into any ad. And if I forgot to do that, I'm gonna have uh, an ad or a multiply that's gonna be completely wrong. So by representing these as fixed point, we're gonna let the tool do the hard work of keeping our decimal points aligned when we come to any numerical operations. So let's use the FI class in MATLAB to also represent our values. So the FI function, the first argument is gonna be the value. So let's use zero to start. The next value is whether it's signed or unsigned, zero being unsigned. The next argument is the word length. Let's choose a word length of three bits. And the final argument is the fractional length. So let's choose a fractional length of one. And let's assign this to a variable. So now that I've got this value A, A is an embedded FI object. And A has properties. So if I hit dot, I can see a whole list of stuff which you can scroll through and try yourself. But there's a ton of things. Now, the ones I use the most are epsilon. This is the step size. Range. Those are the values that A can represent. So it's minimum of zero, maximum 3.5, just like I showed in the other example. Let's do the same thing for sign value. So all I have to do is change that to a one. Range of A. And it's giving me the exact same results that I calculated when I did the example. And I can also access nice internal things like the binary value, the decimal value. This is the stored integer decimal value. And I can convert it to a double if I wanted to actually use it in a MATLAB script or something like that. There's also the hex value. So you can convert using the FI class and FI object to its binary equivalent. But let's say you want to go the other way. Well, I've written my own little helper script to go from a binary value to a fixed point. And you can see an example here, fi to bin, and then you're providing signed, word length, fractional length. And what it will do is it does bin to des, so it converts it to a decimal value here. It takes into account the signed, whether you need to subtract or not, and then finally divides by the fractional length to give a resultant fixed point real world value that you could then put into the FI object. So for example, if I wanted bin to FI of, we'll just do some random binary value. We'll make it sign. We'll say that it's a 10 word length, 10 fractional length. That's the fixed point value. I could actually then call the FI class with the same thing. Assign it to A. A dot bin. Hopefully that gives me the same answer, which it does. So now let's actually go into Simulink and do some examples here of that same ad that I showed previously. So I set up two constant blocks. You can see I set the value to FI. This is the MATLAB FI class. The first argument is the value. The next argument is unsigned. The next argument is number of bits. And the final argument is the fractional length. So you can see here I threw down two displays to show what my values were. And I actually picked a value that can't be represented when I put in one there. So let's actually put in four. And hit run again. So I can see here the value is 4 that it thinks it is. And then the store integer binary, we can see the th actual 3 bits. So what I did to show this is I turned on numeric to display format to binary stored integer. So let's go into an add block and add these two numbers together. And we're going to copy over our same displays. 
hit run again. And another thing that I'm going to turn on under display, signals and ports, port data types, so I can actually see the numerical representations of each. So what you'll see here is that it actually got 4.5, and it magically took care of the rules in the ad that said that I'm going to actually need 6 bits to represent the value that I am computing here. So there's a few key things to note here. You'll see that once I turn on the data types, I see U fix 3, a capital E, meaning positive exponent, 1, U fix 3, EN minus 1, which is a negative exponent, negative 1. You can also see that here it aligned that LSB here is the LSB here, and then this bit position here actually aligns with that position there in the, in the binary value. So it's done all the hard work of keeping track of decimal points here. So the one thing to note here that's very important is the way it calculates the data types in the ads will depend on your actual hardware. So if you're using a processor, it'll try to keep, for instance, 16-bit or 32 bits all the time. I've chosen ASIC FPGA, so it keeps the raw binary values. It's not going to try to use 16 or 32 bits. It's going to use whatever the rule truly needs. So I've dropped in a product, and you can see the result of the product here is 2, 0 0.5 times 4. And yet again, it's kept track of the number of fractional bits I'll have, as well as the number of total bits needed from the product. So for a product, the number of bits is the sum of the two incoming bits, and the fractional length is the sum of the two fractional lengths. So 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So that gives me a result of 3 bits plus 3 bits, which is a 6 bits unsigned fixed. So I hope that this video has been helpful. We've covered the basics of fixed point, why we use it to keep track of our decimal place in binary math, how you can use the MATLAB FI class, and a simple example of fixed point in Simulink.